In this case, any adjectives for the killer are petty and insufficient. Stefan Svitek suffered from zoophilia, necrophilia, sadism and sadomasochism. His personality and the crime scene he left behind also corresponded to this. Andre Rigo is the best known in our country in terms of the number of murders, but if we talk about brutality, Stefan Svitek is a bestial killer that Czechoslovakia does not remember. If you think horror stories offer the most perverse stories, you're wrong. On the day of his tenure, Stefan Svitek knew no boundaries. Intoxicated with alcohol and an axe in his hand, he stood over his wife Maria and two little daughters. What followed is difficult to describe. Stefan Svitek spent his childhood in the settlement of Kisuka in not very enviable conditions. He had been learning aggressive behavior since he was a child. He indulged in frequent alcohol consumption, which aroused aggression and anger in him. He developed his offensive behavior on all family members, but mostly on his wife. Thus, Stefan himself, who did not see anything unusual in him, took the unacceptable behavior to heart. It didn't take long for Stefan's behavior to become cruel. Already at the age of 10, he tied a cat to an eighth nest or wrapped a frog in handers and set it on fire. Animal cruelty has grown into sexual appetite. From the age of 12, he had occasional sexual intercourse with cattle. In addition, however, he continued to cause them enormous pain. He cut cows on genitals and udders, and neither he castrated bulls. Once, when he did not have a knife, a broken light bulb fell into his hand, which he then used to cut off the bull's testicle. But he also caused pain. As he said, he indulged in it when he or someone he hurt suffered. He used to prick needles into his nipples and testicles, then cut his stomach with rusty wire. He pushed various objects into his rectum to cause him the most intense pain. Endowed with so many disorders, he was as dangerous to society as a young man. This is mostly evidenced by the fact that as a 27-year-old he had served eight years behind bars. The reason was petty theft and rape. He committed his first crime at the age of 15 for petty theft. A year later, however, he advanced to the next level in the hierarchy of offenses. His victim was a 40-year-old mentally retarded woman who he imprisoned in a cellar and repeatedly raped. In the same year, he also suffered animal cruelty, property damage and other notches in the criminal record. In addition to imprisonment, he was also ordered to receive psychiatric treatment. However, after his release, he persevered. He earned two years for unauthorized use of a motor vehicle. The blackmail of a 54-year-old woman followed, for which he received another four years. The scroll's life was thus mostly made up of a prison. He committed the crime constantly. He always warmed himself at large until they came to him again. In 1981, however, a new hope came to Svitek's life. She was Mary, with whom he had a daughter that year. Two years later the marriage came. But life with Svitek was not easy at all. He suffered from alcohol and analgesic addiction who aroused in him the aggressive behavior he knew from his father. He often beat his wife and daughters, Maria still had a daughter from a previous relationship, and physically abused him. Growing up as a child in such an environment, nothing special happened to him. He repeatedly tied his older daughter in a state of intoxication and had fun with it. But Scroll's normal behavior was about to end. It was October 30, 1987, and Svitek and his friend were headed into the woods to cut wood. They stayed in the forest until about 1600 hours, when another friend joined them to help them cut and store the wood. After a full day's work, the men went to the tavern. The beer was alternated by punches, into which they also mixed two bottles of currant wine. They left the pub after a few hours. But the evening was not over. They continued drinking at the Kron Hotel, where they stayed until the final. Then everyone went their separate ways. When Svitek arrived home around 2300 hours, the woman and the children were gone. It occurred to him that they were probably in a summer house in the garden. After a knock again Maria's wife came to the door and told him to return to where he had come from. The scroll headed for the axe shed. He wanted to open the door himself. After a few minutes of succeeding, he was gone. Suddenly he was over his sleeping wife and children with an axe in his hand. He began to blame her for not opening it up, asking for an explanation. Knowing his alcohol excesses, Mary turned her back and ignored her husband. But she shouldn't have done that. The scroll dealt her 16 blows to her head in a state of heavy intoxication and accumulated aggression. Both daughters began to wake up to this. He didn't hesitate and started hitting them on the head as well. In a fit of rage, he disfigured both daughters and his wife beyond recognition. But that was just the beginning. When he finished, he went to the kitchen, where he noticed a clean knife placed on the kitchen counter. So he traded the axe for him. He first rammed the knife into his wife, which he then cut from the bottom to the neck. 
In a state of unrelenting excitement, he tore all his entrails, brain and eyes out of her. He scattered them all around him. The fetus also fell out. He finally cut off his wife's breasts. He continued with his daughters, whom he put in his bag to take them to the forest. After a few meters, however, he returned, dumped his bodies on the floor and began to have sexual satisfaction over them. He then took the razor and opened the daughter's chest and abdomen. He RPD them both dead and dissected them. The barking of the dog took him over from the murderous fever. With the increasing light in the sky and the declining blood alcohol level, he began to realize the consequences and seriousness of his action. He washed himself, put on clean clothes, and ran away. Over the next few hours, however, he often considered suicide by hanging himself. The deed was almost complete, but under the weight of his body, the wooden beam did not hold it and broke. For the next few hours, he just got drunk and suffered self-harm. Exhausted, he headed to the police, where he confessed. When the police arrived at the scene, they did not believe their eyes. Internal organs were scattered throughout the house, and the walls and floor were sprayed with blood and intestinal contents. The regional court found Stefan Svitek guilty of a particularly brutal triple murder and sentenced him to death for his bestial behavior. On June 8, 1989, the court was executed. The scroll thus became the last executed in Czechoslovakia.